Hi there, this is Hannah Jay with realestatesiny.com. Today I'm standing in front of the Staten Island Museum at the Snug Harbor campus. I'm going to interview the program director, Diane Matthias, about the history of the Staten Island Museum, uh, some of the collections that it has to offer, and uh, just what's coming up in the near future. The Staten Island Museum was founded many years ago, 1881, by a group of 14 young men and women, naturalists, who at the time uh, each had collections and they were interested in nature and they saw the fact that Staten Island was changing rapidly. There was development, there was change of uh, the woods and the fields and the botany, the uh, flora and fauna of Staten Island was changing, uh, farms were growing, and industry was coming in as well. So they were concerned with that. They had their own collections. They put them together to become a larger collection. So they were very focused on natural science and um, environment. A general interest museum is what I call sort of an old school museum, the kind that a small town would have that tells the story of everything that happens there and, and the interests of the community. So that's what we are. We are poised to be able to tell stories about our three main collections, which is art, science, and history. My favorite part of showing our collections to the public is the diversity um, of what we have. So people on Staten Island or coming from overseas, we have visitors from all over. Um, they like the, um, the real stuff. That's what we have. We have real specimens, we have real documents, we have real paintings. Um, it's a like a collection should be. Um, and the fact that we have three that work together, that's a pretty unique thing. We're the only general interest museum left in New York City. And we have a lot of material that people don't know about. And that's hopefully what people will learn when they come to our new building. We also want to reach out to community more and more and learn what they're interested in based on our collection and continue collecting as well, so the exhibits will reveal what people care about in this area. The idea for the cicada exhibit is sort of nature dictated that. It comes every 17 years, so going back, way back into time in the 1800s, we started collecting this thing. William T. Davis was the cicada man. He was the world expert because he started collecting here where you have periodical cicadas. They don't occur in other countries. They, don't, they only occur on the uh, northeast and southern um, eastern coastline of, of the United States. So, so it was inherent that he look at this animal and learn about it as a young man. So since he was 15, he was collecting these things. So we, every 17 years, everyone forgets about it, and that's the beauty of it. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a cicada year. How many have you lived through? It's, um, I think we're, we have, the lar of course, the largest emergence of all the New York boroughs, so this is the place to come to see the periodical and wait for another 17 years. Very excited about our uh, expansion to Snug Harbor. I'm sitting here in front of our, our next building, We'll be adding 18,000 square feet of space with Building A coming on. It will be completely climate controlled. It will also be a green building. Um, and it, it just is, finally, we're going to be able to show you our, our historic paintings, new exhibits that are, are um, re responding to what people are interested in, um, connecting our collections together. We'll have a giant mastodon in the, in the foyer. It's going to be um, unusual because we'll be able to talk about all our collections in a building and have a lot more access for people here. I think my museum is lucky to be part of this community. Um, so having an organization, a cultural organization, is only as good as what it does today. Um, so by opening up ourselves, by having more access for people, by having the archives here where people can make appointments, do their genealogy, um, having exhibits about your hometown if you live here that you might not have known about the history. If you've come in the last 50 years, you might not know um, what longtime families have known, which is there's a lot of cultural history here. We have a land grant from the 1600s. We have documents and things to see. We have real science based on this very 
um, distinct island, which is useful for scientists. So I think um, we intend to make it more and more user friendly for people and to learn from our audience what, what is um, the big deal at the Staten Island Museum. We had promised to come here when Snug Harbor was saved from the wrecking ball and it didn't happen and it didn't happen and it didn't happen and these beautiful historic buildings, these old dormitories have been under, uh, under a cloak for a long time and by bringing this one forward, working with our great architects, Glickman and Maynard, we're going to show a really world-class uh, program for people, a real world-class experience to come to this building and see it, um, see it and use it and uh, that's what I'm excited about. Our working schedule is to open in later 2014. As I said, it was a long time coming to do this, and we're enthused about uh, what it will bring to our community and showcase Staten Island and its historical, artistic, and scientific um, treasures. Once again, this is Hannah Jay with realestatesiny.com. I'm here standing in front of the Robert Richard Randall vault. This is actually where the founder of Snug Harbor is buried. And this is part of a larger campus. Snug Harbor has a lot to offer, um, but the largest part of the Staten Island Museum will be located here and open to the public in 2014. Thank you for joining us today. Um, be, be sure to join us for the next installment in our series and come see the Staten Island Museum.